I'm sitting with a gorgeous Malamute, a husky mix with piercing eyes, and three designer dogs that certainly don't know why they're here. Let's sit with some dogs. I'm walking down the hall and I see this black and white young Australian Shepherd that has jumped up all the way into the windowsill. And let me tell you, this is not normal dog behavior. A cat may be sure, but not a dog. Now, what do you think? Do you think she's scared or is this a spot of comfort for her and she's excited to see people walking by? I cannot figure it out. We have got to go in and sit down with her and see what the deal is. Hi, baby. It's okay. Oh no. As I suspected, she is terrified. There are signs of this everywhere. For example, her food all over the place. She most likely panicked, landed in her food bowl, and it went everywhere. At first glance, it's cute and it's endearing, but when you sit there, when you go in there with her, you realize this is out of fear. She is shut down and the best thing she can think of to do is find the high point in the farthest corner she can, which in this kennel is a windowsill. I've got to try something, so I, I start with a treat and that works. Okay, okay. We're okay with a little eye contact. Just the, the little moments of progress. You come down here? I'm trying to mix some things in here, some eye contact, touch when I give her a treat. Sometimes I'll try to reinforce a treat with a touch and show her it's a good thing. I try to switch up my stance a little bit. You can see she's still flinching. I think sometimes it's like, if you can't beat him, join him. <laughs> if she won't come down to me, I'll just sit up in the windowsill with her for a little bit. something I can try here. I've got a whole treat stick. Let me try to look away from her. Now I am no certified expert or anything, but I think if I can get her out of the windowsill, that will disassociate the fear that she is associated with the windowsill. So that, that's why I'm trying to do that. If she wants to stay there and she is not ready yet, that is okay. I will respect those boundaries. And after about 20 minutes, I just said, you know what? Okay, I'm gonna sit on the floor here. You sit in the windowsill and then this happened. Whoa, that's a big deal. And I may not look excited, but I, trust me, I am holding it in. But I cannot bring that level of energy to this moment, but wow, I'm excited. Oh, this makes my heart so happy. Like the fact that she is trusting me enough to even make, I'm like doing everything I can to keep her from jumping back up in her comfort spot. Here. Oh, it's a good girl. Yeah. I want her comfort space to be good people, not a windowsill. She's making good eye contact with me, like no problem. Good girl, good girl. Yeah, come here, come here, come here. Oh. <laughs> that was still a good five minutes. You did good. I am really proud of your progress. <laughs> come here, go another treat. I'll bet she jumps down right away. Watch. Come on, you just kidding. Good girl, look at that. This is what I'm talking about. Yeah, you're a good girl. You're a smart girl too, fast learner. Oh, this is so awesome. I think if you adopt a dog like this and you're willing to give it time, like weeks, months even, and just also know like, she's always probably gonna be a little reserved. You can get yourself the most rewarding relationship, like a dog who, it's almost like they just appreciate you so much more because they know they've been here. It's like they, it's kind of like they've hit bottom already. Oh. And in that journey together, the bond that you two will create, there is nothing like it. I don't know if you noticed it, but even her little ears now, they're like playful and bouncy forward. It's all those little body language cues that like, unless you get in a room with a dog and spend time with them, you can't see them. They happen so fast, they're so subtle. But in the dog world, those subtle cues are huge. Come here. Come here. Dave's a good girl. Dave's a good girl. If you're ever working with or training a dog, sometimes like 20 minutes at max, and then they're just kind of tired of that. And anything past that, you're just not gonna see as much progress. And I, I we made good progress with her, like mentally and physically, we saw changes. And so I'm gonna call it right now, but I've gotta work on figuring out how to promote her. Because she needs a home 
an environment like this for her when she's already stressed out. It's just hard. Look at that. She didn't want me to leave now. Oh. Did you see she came down from the window? Yes, I oh did. Oh my goodness. I think I have a name for her. You know that you know that song, How Much Is the Doggy in the Window? Do you know that song? Yeah. Do you know I, that song? I've actually heard it, yeah. Okay, um, the singer, I just looked it up and it's Patty Page. So what about, uh, what about Paige? Paige is a good name. Perfect, Paige. yeah. How much is that doggy in the window? We just named her Paige. Let's see here, how old is she? She's about a year. But wait, 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 wait. Uh, she has a hold on her? She has a hold on her. Yes, she has a hold for today. Oh, that is great. Oh, she might be going home. Okay, I'm gonna dig in, find out what's going on, but right now, I wanna introduce you to an amazing puppy. Puppy alert. I think the thing with just right now with Malinois, and I don't know if he's full Belgian Malinois, but there's just so many in the shelter right now. They definitely are one of the more common breeds in the shelter. And he was just seeming a little sad, a little stressed out. Look at that stress right there. Oh. So I just wanted to pull him out and spend a little time with him. Oh, I think at this age, like it's a pivotal age, he's probably six months, you know, four to six months. And if he can get adopted now and get into a home that can really guide him, it'll go a long way. It breaks my heart to see the dog so young, just really struggling to comprehend what's going on. Why am I in this place, in this situation? Oh, hey, oh, there you're coming to life, huh? Nice. There's just something too about big puppies, I mean really big puppies where, I don't know, they're, they've got to be my favorite. Like, I love all puppies, but big puppies with big paws like this that are almost as big as my hand. These little floppy ears. Yeah. We knew his story. Good Samaritan found them on property they owned within the litter, kept them for two weeks, and then no one was found, so grabbed them into the shelter. Might have had the siblings adopted out already. Yeah. Well, you, you're the only one left, but. Okay, get this, while I was sitting with this puppy, the team came in and they said that there's someone that wants to do a meet and greet. They're in the lobby right now, ready to meet him. So that's exciting. Okay, now this next dog is a husky mix, has the most piercing eyes, but also a really sad story because it wasn't her fault. Well, it was her fault, technically. Let's sit with her and then I'll tell you the story. Look at her eyes, she's so pretty. Can you sit? You know any tricks? Sit. 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 Good girl. She's one of the more unique mixes I've seen. Look at her face. Huskies are probably equal to German Shepherds in the shelter right now for the most common breed, at least at this shelter. And the thing about Huskies is they're such a misunderstood breed because they are amazing. They're smart, they're dynamic, they're loyal, but they're also like very independent. And they're escape artists like I've never seen before. <laughs> and they're also prey driven, like a lot of dogs. And unfortunately, the reason she's back is because of her prey drive. I guess the previous family had a cat and chickens, and the chickens are no more. I know, I can't believe you. Such a pretty dog, and you did that. And so she's either gotta go into a home that can really work on that, or preferably a home without chickens. I will tell you this though, I am sorry. I'm sorry you were back here and that that didn't work out. You probably have no clue why. <laughs> I'm sure she thought she really, really was doing a good thing, getting the chickens. You're a good dog. I always try with the dogs to give them kind of positive affirmations. Like, watch this. Good girl, good girl. The difference in her face when I tell her she's a good girl is like night and day. And you know what though, she is. Okay, let's have you work for this one. It's the last one. Sit. Good girl. That's a good girl. Oh, get this, as I'm sitting there with Rosie, it turns out someone's interested and they wanna meet Rosie in the meet and greet area. So they came in, grabbed Rosie, and they're meeting right now. 
And look, right off the bat, it's going great. Nice couple. This gal seems like she's really enjoying this. This day's going great so far. Could this be an adoption? Yeah. Well, what do we think? Oh yeah, oh, we're, she's our forever yeah. puppy. Yeah, oh, that's great. Baby. If you're anything like me, you're probably celebrating, but we might be counting our chickens before they hatch. <laughs> Maybe the wrong phrase to use with her, but then this happened right after they said yes. No! As soon as they said yes, they're going to adopt Rosie. They went up front, they started filling out the paperwork, and they just thought, man, we're gonna get out of here, we're gonna leave and go home. But it's for a good reason. It's because they want to get their dogs, bring them up here, and just make sure that they all get along, and I am all for that. So, adoption not happening yet, but cross your fingers that they come back and that it happens very soon. I don't care how tough you are. When you see two dogs huddled together in the corner of a kennel, using each other for support, that may or may not know each other, if your heart doesn't sink, well, you are not a dog person. I've noticed with duos, there's typically one that's the leader and has a bit more courage. It's willing to take the treat first or take the love first or advance just a little bit first. And so I usually try and work with that one first before reaching out to the other dog that might be closed down a bit more. Look at that, we got two treat chompers. I think these two are probably siblings. At least they came in together. What you're seeing right here is just us spending 15, 20 minutes together, just getting little treats, getting comfortable with each other. You feel friendly. Hey, there we go. We're coming to life. Hi, cutie. Oh, what a cute pup. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Hey, come on, come on, you gotta share. Come on, I bet you come out, I bet you come out for treats. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, look at that, look at that. <laughs> it's like I gotta coax this one out so I can hand the other one a treat. <laughs> They're a little scared and timid right now, but I, within 24 hours of them being in your house, I guarantee they're gonna be running around and playful little pups. Like they're just scared right now because of the environment. I don't think they're, I don't think they're scared dogs. Hi. It's comforting though, just being here with them. Like you can see they've already kind of opened up and, and that makes me really happy. <laughs> you checking out the phone? Here, let's, let's put treats on there and see if they'll eat the treat on the phone. Oh, <laughs> I found it. <laughs> That's pretty cute. Can we just talk about our other little friendly neighbor in here too? Look at this, look at this little munchkin. Look at this guy. So he is blind. I think he's about 10. Do we know his name? Gucci. Gucci? Here, sorry, I forgot you're blind. Here. You think someone's looking for him? Yeah. I'd say so too. Yeah, I mean, owner known. And then we have these two, and now they're jealous as to why the other dog is getting some treats. Come here. Come here. Come on. Come on. Cute little paws. Progress. I love this so much. This is like, it was like the saddest kennel that I came into and now it's like the most fun little kennel with all my fun little new friends. And, oh, and you know what, by the way, all the messages y'all are sending me about you wanna do what I do, I think that is awesome and you should. You might not be able to run right to the Red Spear shelter and start sitting with the dogs because that takes a little time, a little practice, a little trust from the rescuer shelter. But I will tell you this, these dogs need you and the best way to get started, because I love it when y'all ask me like, how do I get started in doing what you are doing, I want to start a rescue. Start small, like go to your local rescue or shelter and volunteer. Even if it's a couple hours a week or a few hours a month, you will learn so much in that time and you will be able to impact the lives of so many pets just by doing that. Like you can do what I do. You can go out and help these animals. So if you're watching this and you're going, man, I want to do this with my life. I want this to be a part of my life. I'm here to tell you, you can. That's pretty exciting. And by the way, you guys are being so good letting each other take turns on the treats. Alexis, we don't have names on these other two, do we? No, we don't. If someone named you Gucci, I imagine they're coming for you. Because if you are truly as valuable as a handbag, right, is that right, Gucci's a handbag? 
Yeah, it's a designer. I know dogs, not handbags. Okay, well, should we name the other two designers then? Louis and Vuitton? <laughs> uh, Louis has a little brown in him, and Vuitton is completely white. Louis, Vuitton, and Gucci. Don't give me, don't give me that look. I'm trying to flex my knowledge of designers. You're doing great. <laughs> Okay, let's keep our fingers crossed for all these kennel mates. We we can get them adopted. I need more treats. Going to sit with the next. I no, think we're out. Are we out? Yeah. Oh, they're just too good. <laughs> uh, by the way, the treats you guys see me giving to the dogs, you can get those, and we we make all of these. Like these are our treats, so it helps support us. But also, correct me if I'm wrong. It will be the best dog treat your dog has ever had. True story. You don't you don't told it. It's not the best advertisement because it doesn't have the treats in there. It's just like an empty bag. <laughs> but seriously, your dog will love them, and I'll ship them out to you if you order them. Just go to rockykanaka.com slash jerky to get some for your dog. I don't think I've ever sat with a Malamute at the shelter. So when I saw him, I was so excited. And look at his face. It looks like someone drew him. Like he's not even real. On top of that, he's fluffy. What is his story? Hi. Why are you so fluffy? Hi. <laughs> hey Siri, call Alexis. <laughs> uh, what's Rama's story? Do you know? He was found by a good Samaritan, brought him over to animal control, like just at the corner of the street, and they told him to bring the dog here. Uh, and at first, he was apparently really nervous um and they couldn't even check him to see if he was a girl or a boy oh. um or scan him for really a, a chip or anything so he's uh definitely seems like he's made a change okay awesome anything else i should know about him just that the dog walkers say that he's really friendly and playful now and he's calm and well behaved and he's easy to walk okay awesome thank you you hear that everyone says you're a good boy <laughs> i would agree with that look at you look at that face and he's so fluffy. He's like a cotton ball. No joke, you are the fluffiest dog ever. When you look at a dog like this and you just see the defined face and the characteristics that he has, how can you not love dogs at that point? And the amount that he loves to cuddle, like, it, could he be a dream dog? I think so. <laughs> like, I think so. I think he's probably got a pretty fair, high level of energy but his desire right now for love and just being close to somebody is overriding all of that energy because he hasn't been out for his walk today yet. Him melting into me like a marshmallow, making me feel like I'm a s'more, <laughs> it just makes me so happy. Oh, I feel so great. You're a good boy. I think the surprising reason he's not getting adopted is people look at him and they see the energy he has and they think he's just gonna be a tremendous amount of work. And right now he's in Southern California. A lot of people, rightfully so, are gonna be concerned about the heat. Alaska Malamutes were bred originally for their strength and endurance. They're sled dogs. I mean, they're an Arctic dog. Alaska is in their name. We're gonna have to work really hard to find him the right family that can work with him. The thing with Malamutes is they take ongoing, regular maintenance. That, that is the one thing I'll say if you get a dog like this, which is not bad, but I mean, Mel just groomed him a week ago and he's already got some matting. Like he needs to be brushed constantly. Nah, I wish I could sit with him all day with all these dogs. There's so many good dogs in the shelter right now. There are gonna be some very lucky families if they choose to adopt any of these dogs. Okay, I actually have an idea because there's not a lot of time left for Paige. And so, what if I go live? At least that way, if her potential family doesn't show up, I'm doing a live video and hopefully I'm spreading the word that she needs a home because she's gonna need that extra level of support because of how timid she is. She doesn't come across as a confident dog that someone might wanna adopt right out of the gate. So, I'm going live and let's see if that does anything. Going live was really amazing because you all are the most amazing community. I gotta tell you, the amount of just hearts and positive comments that came in was really fantastic. Also, I was blown away by how many of you knew that song, How Much Is the Doggy in the Window? <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was weird because I knew that song, but I guess there are a lot of weirdos out there, just like me. Okay, I really hope this helps because there are only a few minutes left today, and so if her family doesn't come, maybe, maybe 
This will help spread the word and someone will come tomorrow. Yeah, the hold is for today. Just double checking, but that live was pretty good, huh? Yeah. She did so good in there. I know, so okay. much better. But fingers crossed though, because we got, what, like 10 minutes? Yeah. Maybe? Frankly, the page thing is stressing me out, the time limit. But here's some good news. Rosie's potential adopters actually came back with their two dogs to do a meet and greet. Now, all we have to do is make sure that this goes off without a hitch. Okay, seems like at first everything's going all right. Whoa, big hug for mom. That's a plus. A German Shepherd doesn't seem to mind some kisses. Okay, I think we're gonna find out the answer any minute here. If you're watching any of this and you're like, I wanna do this one day, uh, but you're busy right now, you can't do it, or you just wanna be a bigger part of this, I would love to have you be a bigger part of this. And you can by becoming a member. Just hit the join button. You get to be the first to know any of these updates and it just helps us continue to help more dogs. Hey, whoa, is that a high five? Oh, this could be good but it's not up to me, it's up to them. Let's find out what they say. Attention in the shelter. Animal Friends of the Valleys would like to congratulate the family for adopting our one-year-old Husky Mix, Rosie. Thank you to the amazing couple that adopted Rosie. Rosie, congrats on your new family. Okay, but wait, what about our little Malinois puppy? Okay, so get this. The gentleman's name right now that is looking at this little puppy is named Roger. And Roger came here specifically because he is greenlit for a service dog. And so he wants to get one from the shelter. Awesome, but he wants to make sure that his kids and the puppy get along. So I'm holding my breath here that this works. Now I know dogs and I know kids. Well, <laughs> well, I'm still learning with both. But notice that hug right there? That could be a really good thing or a bad thing because the dog or the kid could make a sudden movement but no, it seemed to work out just fine. I think everything's going just fine. Wait a minute, is that, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> well, after the potty accident, everyone still seems to be okay. That didn't seem to be a major deterrent like it could be. Back to seeing if this puppy gets along with both the kiddos. The kids and the dog are doing great, but it's all gonna come down to what dad decides. And being a dad, I know firsthand, you cannot make these kind of decisions lightly. Okay, so he's a cruel dog, yeah. but uh, what's it gonna be? Are you guys gonna take him home? Yeah, we're taking him home. What? That's awesome! <laughs> you want me to go get him? Yeah. You got a new collar? Yeah. Okay, let me go get him. And get this, dad even let the kids name their new puppy. They named him Primal. Perfect. Uh, attention in the shelter, Animal Friends of the Valley would like to congratulate the family for adopting our five-month-old shepherd mix that they have named Primal. All right. All right. Thank you. Yeah, Primal. Roger, Emma, Ben, thank you for saving Primal's life. Yes, <laughs> that is so awesome. It makes me so happy to see all these adoptions, but there are still dogs that need our help. And you know what, you can help. When you share this, it could be the share that leads to that dog's forever home. Paige's potential family didn't show up, but there's no reason to be sad because we had a lot of wonderful adoptions and you guys are a part of helping these dogs get adopted. For updates on any of the dogs, go to rockykanaka.com or if you wanna watch one of the pup date videos where you can also get updates, I'll put it right here and I'll link it in the description below. Special thanks to Animal Friends of the Valleys, all of the staff and volunteers, you are saving lives every day and I can't thank you enough for it. <laughs>